And lastly is stinja, uh, relieving oneself. Um, stinja really is the removal, uh, the, the wisdom behind it is that it is to uh, encourage cleanliness and removal of impurities, neatness and protection from diseases. Um, literally, stinja means to remove traces of urine and feces with water. Go to the next one. So when we are going to um, relieve ourselves, uh, we should be mindful of our nakedness. The Prophet said, a screen is set up between the eyes of the jinn and the private parts of the son of Adam. When they mention Allah's name, they say Bismillah before using the toilet. So Allah creates a screen between the jinn and the private part of the son of Adam, Allah protects you in that way. Um, so we must try to make sure that we are not naked or uncovered. And secondly, we must make great effort to protect our body and clothes from becoming stained with the impurity. Because the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in so many a different hadith, he walked by the graves of two, two graves and he said, both of them are being punished. Uh, because they don't wash urine from themselves. So um, this is somebody, This is one of the things that we try to avoid. Uh, istinja means to clean with water. Uh, this feces. We use our left hand to clean ourselves. We use our right hand to eat our food. Uh, and as Ibn Malik said, whenever the Prophet went to the privy to answer the call of nature, a servant and I used to carry a skin a what skin water container and a spare and he would clean himself with water so we are encouraged to clean uh, ourselves with water uh, cleaning with stone is referred to istijmar which is to clean yourself with stones indeed the prophet forbid us from facing the qibla while defecating or urine from wiping ourselves using the right hand wiping with less than three stones, wiping with dung and bones. So this uh, is in Muslim and it is that there's another way, there are other ways other than water in which the Muslim is, a, can, is uh, allowed to clean themselves. And one of those ways is to clean ourselves with stone, with at least three different stones that we can um, use. Uh, the, can you go on the next slide? Let me see. Okay, so when you're going to use stones, there are a couple of things we need to be careful of. Uh, make sure you have clean stones. Use your left hand. Uh, that the stones that you are selecting can actually do the job. Uh, you cannot use bones and dung um, to clean yourself. You have to make sure also whatever I pick it up to clean myself is not like religious texts and sacred items. Uh, and you can use like toilet paper, cloth, sanitary paper, you know, um, these are different areas that you can use to clean yourself. Um, so this is uh, when you're going to use stones. Now, the prohibited things when you are going to make a stinja, you should avoid facing the Kibla. Um, if your situation is such that the bathroom is, is located in a way that you can't help it, then that's fine. But when you, the Prophet said, when you relieve yourselves, do not face the Qibla and do not turn your backs to it while you're urinating or defecating, but turn west or east for it. Uh, in other words, turn in the direction facing the Qibla. Don't turn your backs or your face towards the Qibla. That would mean that we would have to have our bathroom uh, literally make us uh, face either north or south in our situation uh, but we try to do the best we can if your bathroom is like that then there's no fault on yours and we are also asked as we have learned before the prophet said beware of two who are cursed they are those who relieve themselves in the path of people or where they take shelter and rest that we had mentioned before with tahara that you know you these are places of uncleanliness and you're not allowed to go urine in like the roadways and the places where people are going to walk or where people are taking shade under a tree 
Uh, we're not allowed to urine in, in river flowing water. Um, so do not, I mean, do not urinate in still water, sorry, and then bathe in it. If you have still water, like you sometimes, you die in the, ba in the bathtub and then you pee in the bathtub and then you're bathing in the same bathtub. We don't do that, right? Um, the other one. So when you're going into the bathroom, as you mentioned, you should try to have privacy. Um, doa, you should make a doa uh, again in English or Arabic, whichever one is good. Uh, the usual one everybody uh, memorizes, Bismillah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal khaba'is. In the name of Allah, O Lord, in you I take refuge from all evils. You usually enter the bathroom with your right foot, your left foot, sorry. And then uh, when you're finished, you um, exit the bathroom and you say, Gufranak, or your forgiveness. I ask Allah for forgiveness. Um, we also learned before that when you are in the bathroom, you don't answer salam, you don't, you know, you, you don't, um, the, the three forbidden acts, you don't recite Quran or make dhikr in the bathroom. The other one. So there are some dislike things also. If you are in the bathroom, don't speak. You know, you're not, should not be involved in it's a common thing that we are on the phone in the bathroom and all of that. You know, they have found uh, the amount of germs that you get compared, it's like your phone actually, the research show it's 10 times more dirty than the bathroom. <clears throat> and when you take your phone in the bathroom, it's like how many germs gets on it. Uh, but it's very common. People spend long hours in the bathroom on their phone talking. We are discouraged from staying so long in the bathroom that it becomes almost like, you know, um, some of us, we stay very long and we, we are having conversations and all of that. Um, do not do that. Umar ibn Khattab, Ibn Umar reported the Prophet, a man passed by the Prophet while he was urinating and the man gave the Prophet salam and the Prophet did not reply. All right, so we are allowed to do that. Uh, if you are going into the bathroom, you have your Quran in your hand. Uh, we're discouraged from taking any inscriptions with Allah's name or a mushaf or a Quran into the bathroom. Now, if you're scared that you may have something that you know you don't have any place to leave it, and you you you're afraid that it may be stolen if you leave it outside. Like sometimes you're at the airport. And you, you have your whole big suitcase, you have all kinds of things. You get, you get into situations where you are terrified to leave anything uh, outside of your bathroom. In that case, you're allowed to, but you need to make sure it's not in your hand. You have to either put it in your pocket or uh, put it because you're using your hand to um, clean yourself. So you should either put them on a ledge or somewhere you can see them. But generally, we don't carry things that has... Allah's name or revolve with the Quran or hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that we take in the bathroom with us. Uh, our private parts, um, we should not avoid touching our private parts with our right hand. When cleaning ourselves, the Prophet said, none of you should touch your private parts with the right hand while you're urinating. Neither should he clean himself with his right hand while defecated. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. So we want to be able to use our left hand, uh, as I mentioned before, unless you have some condition or something that is difficult for you. Uh, we should avoid urinating in cracks and holes in rocky ground. Uh, this is very um, dangerous. You may have insects or creatures there that may jump out at you and that may harm you. So we do not tend to do that. And we avoid urinating while standing. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ forbid us from urinating while standing unless you are able to avoid the splashing that comes. So if you're in a place where you're able to urinate standing, but it does not splash in you, and there's an example where the Prophet ﷺ went and he saw some trash, some people's trash, and he was able to urinate standing because the way it was positioned, it did not splash in him. So in our situation where we have toilet bowls and we may urine, so 
it's it's okay to stand in that kind of a situation. But if you have a danger of it splashing up on you, then yeah, it is better to sit. And so these are some of the adab and etiquette that uh, has been handed down to us uh, to try to practice. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, with all etiquette, it is sunnah, and we try to do the best we can uh, and to slowly train ourselves to gather from these etiquette, you know, one and two, and try to make them part of our daily life. Uh, and you do the best you can. You know, none of us will be able to practice all of the sunnah. And so we we try to do as much as we are able to. And we trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from us our effort, inshallah. So with that, we will...